Yes, indeed. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. We are live right here on Ustream.tv. It is Friday, July the 5th, 2013. Just the day we move for Independence Day, a.k.a. the 4th of July. And as you can, you may have heard, there were some fireworks out there in the neighborhood. I go by the name of Kenny C. I am your host of the evening. Thank you for joining me. Hope everybody had a fun, happy, and safe 4th of July. Uh, my 4th of July was kind of, it was a decent day. I, you know, I, I bought my own hot dogs and potato chips. I didn't have the usual barbecue, you know, hot dog grilling and stuff. But I did have a good time. I watched White House Down with Jamie Foxx and Channing Tatum. That was a good movie. I'm going to speak more on that on Chilling this Saturday night. Uh, but I'm here. I'm live. I'm on the air. That's all that matters. So tonight we're going to recap Wall Main Event Impact and SmackDown plus live interview with uh, Athena cage any pro wrestler from the uh, New England area and I want to give a shout out to Jim Chatwick congrats to him he was inducted into the Lawrenceburg Wrestling Hall of Fame a couple of weeks ago congrats to him on that uh, I want to congratulate the uh, want to congratulate Natalia and Tyson Kidd. They have said I do. Congrats to them on that. Uh, they've been together for about a decade. Of course, they I believe they debuted in the WWE together, formed the Hard Dynasty with Tyson, uh, with not Tyson, but David Hart Smith. And they formed the high di hard dynasty. They ended up being tag team champions. And of course, David Hart Smith, I think a last year or something. Uh, yes, yeah, so they were tag team champions. So that's a lot of good stuff. Uh, it's a lot of good stuff. I, I enjoy what I saw. Oh, I definitely got to talk about what that happened with TNA. They clean house a bit. They are cleaning house. Talk about some crazy stuff happening. <laughs> as soon as I say David Smith, I scroll on my Facebook page. Uh, let's just go ahead and recap Monday Night Raw first. As they continue on the road to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, which is now nine days away, a week from this Sunday, on pay-per-view. I'm just trying to make sure I know exactly. Okay, here we go. So, Monday Night Wall this past Monday night, you had... um. All the participants of the money, or everyone except RVD, coming out talking about what they gonna do in the Money in the Bank briefcase uh, match, the All Star match. Yet the Shield bouncing back, went on to defeat Christian and the Usos. Shield's gonna be in for a busy night at Money in the Bank. Of course, it's now official. Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins will defend the tag team titles against the Usos and will be a part of the Money in the Bank kickoff. I guess they no longer call it pre-show. They call it a kickoff. And that will take place at uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific on WWE.com, YouTube, Yahoo, and AOL. Among other websites, they 
they have pretty much has been spreading this whole pre-show now kickoff show. I mean, WWE dot. Obviously, I think it's gonna be on the WWE app as well. Who knows? But I think it's just gonna be on the website. Gotta be, you know, log in and stuff. Um, Kane went on up against Randy Orton with Daniel Bryan being the guest referee. Of course, Daniel Bryan def uh, defeated Kane. Actually, you know, uh, Daniel Bryan defeated Randy Orton by submission last Monday. And now on SmackDown, Daniel Bryan may inadvertently calls him the champ of uh, the, the victory there. So, Kane and Orton have the rematch, only this time, Daniel Bryan being the guest referee. And Kane won the first time. He didn't like how he won that. So he asked Daniel Bryan to restart the match. And then the match got restarted. Kane with a boot to Orton's face. And ridiculously, Daniel Bryan with a fast three count, which led to Kane picking up the victory. Grabs Bryan by the throat, acting like he's going to choke slam him. But emotions got in the way. He decided not to. Talk about the friction. So even though Team Hell No is Team Hell No More, really, Kane. I don't know. He, he's he's a he's a conflicted monster at this stage of his career. And I mean, the the Kane of old has no remorse. He chokes slam anybody and anyone. He'll choke slam anyone that looks at him the wrong way. That's just how mean and vicious Kane could be. Uh, so you want to know how team, if there's going to be teamwork between the two or not. Teamwork does help, but teamwork may get in the way of accomplishing the task at hand. That's grabbing that briefcase. You got... Uh, Sheamus versus Fondango. Fondango, uh, Sheamus, excuse me, went on to win by a count out. Dolph Ziggler went up against Jinder Mahal of the 3MB. And, uh, it went from a wrestling match to a three stooges scene. The match, which ended up being victorious by Dolph Ziggler. And then... All three members of the 3MB tried to get the upper hand on Ziggler, but his quickness said otherwise, and he got away unharmed. And then an exclusive on WWE app. Talked to AJ, talk about he's going to be champion again. AJ going, you know, if you notice now, Dom Ziggler's a baby face now. Uh, AJ's a heel. And uh, Biggie Langston's a heel. If you notice, I think that's the first Dolph Ziggler match without AJ and or Biggie in quite a while. Um, so you talk about wild card. <laughs> Those are wild cards. We definitely gonna see if AJ and Biggie gonna be in the corner. It appears that Dolph Ziggler is not going to be in the corner of AJ when she faces Caitlyn for the Divas Championship, which a segue into the number one contender, Caitlyn, the being the powerhouse that she is. I had to look at her as like a mini powerhouse. She went all in on Alicia Fox and pick up the victory. And then after the match, Kate, uh, Caitlin came out with Big E, decided to post a Photoshop pic of Caitlyn's, I guess, pre-WWE photo or whatever. Man, I'll tell you, you want to talk about wrestlers that have to have a thick skin? Divas, 
these ladies wrestlers got a thick skin too. It's no laughing matter, ladies and gentlemen. It's just something not to be taken for granted. Um, you know, wrestlers, just like any other form of entertainers, celebrities under a microscope. And, and you know, this ain't no. The wrestlers are not like actors or actresses. Like you gotta be in good shape. Now, an actor's an actress's case. You gotta be in shape. You gotta be a certain way. You gotta have some sort of physique, depending on the character that you play. But wrestlers, whether you're a babyface or a heel, whether you're a lightweight or heavyweight, you gotta be in good shape. Got thick skin, cause. You're going to be on the microscope by fans and your peers and promoters and bookers. It's not about getting to the dance. It's about staying on the big dance. And that's what wrestlers go through. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, One of the uh, talked about matches was the primetime players going up against the team. Well, the Paul Heyman guys that has cursed Axel, the current in a kind of champion and um and CM Punk. Now CM Punk has been going through this bickering between he and Heyman, especially since payback when CM Punk made his in wing turn. You see CM Punk has has tried all he can to make it clear. Like I'm a I'm your friend not your client. I don't need your help no more. I'm the best in the world. Fall back and focus on Curtis Axel. Well, if you recall, the week prior, CM Punk had a match against Darren Young, which led to a two-on-one beatdown by the primetime players. Paul Heyman saw Punk was in trouble, got Curtis Axel to come in to help out. And... Paul Heyman convinced Paul Heyman convinced Curtis Axel to have a, to team up with Punk. And there was times when Curtis Axel did not want to tap Punk in. He wanted to handle his own business. He wanted to show that hey, he didn't want to show that I could be a good tag team partner. He just wanted to he just wanted to take, get all the the glory, pretty much. CM Punk did much of the dirty work and did a lot of damage with the go to sleep. But in the end, after the go to sleep, Curtis Axel with the blind tag and goes for the pinfall and picks up the victory for his team. And Paul Heyman is joyful of the, of the outcome. So friction continues. I said this last week and I'm going to say it again. I don't see CM Punk winning the money in the Bay Gladder match. All because Brock Lesnar. That match will take place at SummerSlam. I just don't see. Now, CM Punk He's in this match because, well, he's CM Punk. He's a two-time Money in the Bank winner. Back-to-back. -back, has a chance to go for historic third. No other guy has won more than once other than CM Punk. No one has won three times. So it'll be a big deal for Punk if he can do it. Just so he can see himself back in the WWE title picture. We definitely shall see about that. Uh, Vicky Guerrero has been going through some rough times. Too many voices in her head. She's like a female Wendy Yorton right now. Having to hear from Vince. Having to hear from Stephanie. Having to hear from Stephanie. And Stephanie dropped the bombshell on Vicky. Informing her that next Monday on Raw, 
when they head to Baltimore, they're going to have a job evaluation. So she either could be promoted to general manager or she's going to be unemployed before we even get to money in the bank. You know, on on SmackDown side, and I'm thinking to myself, how the hell Booker T got injured and he's not a, he's not an active wrestler? He must be doing too much training or something. Teddy Long has been the intern general manager. We'll see how that unfolds when he eventually comes back. But as for Vicky, she's been the quote-unquote managing supervisor for a couple of months now. And she feels she's ready to be general manager of Monday Night Raw. She feels that that she has done just enough. But, I want, but I'm wondering, I'm curious which McMahon is going to have the final call on whether she gets promoted or demoted. Or promoted to unemployed. And does Monday Night Raw, the quote unquote longest running weekly epics on the television show, do they really need a general manager? It's not like the general manager is going to do much but make matches, have segments in between matches. I mean, it's not that intriguing. On Monday Night Raw. It's a three hour show. As long as you get more matches. Than talk segments. Then I'm okay with it. Then I, I can give two cents. About general manager on Raw. Smackdown is Smackdown. All it's going to be the B show. Contrary to what Smackdown lovers. May think. And we've been seeing. So many intriguing promos from the Wyatt family for quite some time and Michael Cole announced uh, Bray, Bray Wyatt formerly known as Husky Harris has announced and they keep saying these words were coming well they're coming alright they coming to debut on Monday Night Raw next week now the question is, who will they first? Who will they be? Who will they be? Who will they be focusing on? Who will be the first victim? Who they going after is what I want to know. Hell, maybe they go after the Shield, battle of the of the trios, but the Shield are a bit busy right now. But I'm curious, who's gonna be the first to go after the? Uh, who will the White family? focus on first who will they be coming after going from we're coming to we're coming after fill in the blank also Miz went on to defeat Ryback Ryback suffered an injury uh, Cena and Henry have their words towards each other uh, Antonio Suzawa goes on to defeat Cody Rhodes uh, there was one thing I forgot to mention as I was recapping SmackDown. Uh, they have announced who's going to be included in the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank match. And according to Teddy Long, these guys are supposed, you know, you got the All-Stars now on the World Title MITV match. These guys are supposed to be the future, so we're gonna take a we're gonna take a look into that. We're gonna take a look into that. Uh, let's see, money in the bank, booty in the bank, shorty with the drink. Yes, that's right. I am rapping a little scrappy. Um. Oh, here we go. It's highlighted. It's just right in front of me just now. Uh, Athena Cage, any pro wrestler, will be calling in uh, in about nine minutes. So, eh, I got plenty of time to spare. We got...
both members of the Roll Scholars. That's Cody Rhodes and uh, Damian Sand now. We got Cesaro Squad. Not, I mean, Zeb Culture Squad, excuse me. That will be Antonio Cesaro and former Money in the Bank winner Jack Swagger. And I believe it was Swagger who won the last Money in the Bank ladder match at uh, at WrestleMania a few years back. You also got Ray Barrett. Maybe the Barrett Barrett Watch could be a step closer of making history. Being the first British world champion. Then you got Fondango. And then you have the United States champion and SHIELD member, Dean Ambrose. So, you got Ambrose, Fondango, Cesaro, let's see, jeez, uh, time. Pretty much everyone with the exception of Swagger is making their Money in the Bank ladder match debut. Maybe Wolves and Barrett have been to one before, uh, but Sandow, Ambrose, Fondango, and Cesaro. That's four. Let's see, four out of seven will be in their first MIT B ladder match. So there you go on that forefront. Cena, Darwheel, if you were to tell me that. Dolph Ziggler will assist John Cena? I say, you crazy. Well, that's exactly what happened. Cena with assist from Dolph Ziggler picking up the victory in the champion versus champion match versus Alberto Del Rio. And then they had that confrontation. Mark Henry has the championship at hand. And then he get he. Just pretty much threw it at Cena as well went off the air. And that is your Monday Night Raw update there. Got Christian defeated in, uh, Damian Sandow. Jack Schrager defeated Sin Cara. And Biggie, Hanks, uh, Biggie Langston defeated Kurt Hawkins on main event. There's your recap there. Uh, I want to get into Impact Wrestling real, uh, <clears throat> for a moment. Uh, they were cleaning house. They were cleaning house. A couple of wrestlers have been cut, have been released from their contract. Or as we all know, like to call uh, budget cuts. They released the likes of Crimson. Which a lot of people thought he was going to be <clears throat> the future. He's going to have a. He was going to be maybe one of the next big stars in Impact. He's mostly have been wrestling for. Uh, he's mostly been supposed to be the one of the futures and. Uh, pretty much. They clean house. They clean house. They clean uh Crim they got Crimson. He was supposed to be the future. They let him go. And then they also They also have said uh They also have released former multi time Knockout champion Madison Wayne, who's on the verge of her, uh, uh, who's about to be, who is in labor, which is why she hasn't been wrestling. So, I mean, it sucks for Madison Wayne to be cut while she is in labor. I mean, that's just one, it's one thing to cut them. I get it. You know, when you pretty much got no use for them, then you let them go. But you you just don't cut somebody that's in labor. 
And I think that may have been a huge role in Dawn Marie's release when she was with WWE in the early 2000s. And then three gut check contestants have been cut. A lot of people thought maybe Joy Wine was going to have a bright future. Well, he's done. Christian York, he's going to, he won gut check, I think last year. And just the first female gut check winner, Taylor Hendricks, she's gone as well. Taylor Winsley had a match with Mickey James on Impact for the Nightcast title. And another former gut check winner, Joey. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. Joey Wine, Christian York also have been let go. All profiles from all profiles have been taken down from impactwrestling.com. So, um, yeah. And there's also been reports that TNA hasn't been doing a good job paying up their people. Um, but they are in bit of a rut right now because maybe they are just overpaying people. They are overpaying the likes of a Hogan and Sting and, dare I say, Kurt Angle. They're overpaying these old guys. You know, you gotta, you gotta, uh, I mean, this isn't basketball, baseball. Wrestling don't have. I mean, even I guess this shows that even wrestling has a salary cap. Okay, there's certain people that you can give the big bucks to, but Sting, who's in his, and I like Sting, and it was an honor to meet him on a baseball show a few weeks ago. And I don't know exactly. You know what sucks when guys get overpaid like a Hulk Hogan and he's not an active wrestler? You know, that's like saying in basketball, that's like a bench player gets paid more than a starter. That's like a utility player gets paid more than a start than an everyday player. In baseball, that's like a backup quarterback gets paid more than a starting quarterback. You got to pay people that's going to be on the show every week. That's going to actually wrestle. Um, and before I go any further here, um, Jesus Rodriguez, a.k.a. Ricardo Rodriguez, he has been suspended by the WWE for 30 days for his first violation of the talent wellness program. As usual, WWE is not going to unveil exactly what was in the drug tests, what was inside his body. And you know, I think this makes Ricardo the first none wrestler to be suspended in this talent wellness program it's pretty clear WWE is not letting up <laughs> by any means they are not letting up ladies and gentlemen it don't matter if you're a wrestler or a ring announcer or a manager everybody's gonna get tested and if you get caught, if your if your test is positive, that you're gonna get suspended. You go you're gonna thirty, and they go by baseball analogy: three strikes and you're out. The first failed drug test is thirty days, which is Ricardo's going through right now. So don't expect him to be a company with their wheel and money in the bank and for the next four weeks. The second strike is 60 days. The third strike is an automatic termination of your contract. So 
it's not a good look for Ricardo. And I have yet to hear from my guest this evening, uh, Athena Cage. She was supposed to call just two minutes ago. Uh, huh. Well, I'm about to message her on Facebook because this is usually how things go when people usually forget. Uh, you got to message them just to make sure. So I'm hope to get a respond by her calling in momentarily and I will recap impact okay I got a reply from Athena and she's about to call in right now what I don't like about Facebook is every time when I tr I click on the message on people's profile it leads me to okay Athena's calling right now all right she is joining me right now Athena Cage is here on triple threat wrestling radio good evening hi how are you I'm doing real good how was your fourth of July it was actually pretty good uh, just hung around, did nothing really, uh, like, just, I guess, like, well, hung out with family, yeah. That's about it. Well, at least you weren't all alone, you know, on, on the holiday, so that's, that's good to hear. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, what made you decide to be a wrestler? Actually, I decided to wrestle because of one of my friends from high school who actually was also a wrestler. She's retired now, but uh, she got me into everything. Do you remember your first wrestling match you ever had? And if so, who was your opponent and what company did you work for at the time? Actually, at the time, I was working for Awesome Wrestle, uh, for Wrestling, which was my which actually is my boyfriend's promotion, and my first match was against Taylor Nicole, and that was June twenty second, two thousand eight, <laughs> and that was actually in Jackson, New Jersey. It wasn't far from Six Flags, to be exact. And three days after my birthday, that was how funny that was. How did you feel? Leading up to the match, with all the training that you had to go through, you felt, like, nervous? Any signs of butterflies? I'm always nervous before a match, whether I've gone against someone before or not. I'm always completely nervous before a match. And anyone can tell you, I just literally, I don't calm down until, like, afterwards, which I probably should learn to calm down beforehand. But I don't. I feel like it's kind of like a a music performer, like they get all nervous, you know, before, you know, they get nervous maybe five ten minutes before showtime. But when that first song plays, they go in there and just give it all they got. And I guess in wrestler's case, you know, you just you just anxious to get out there and compete. And once your music hits, your theme song hits. Then everything falls into place. Right. Exactly how it is with me. How would you best describe your wrestling style? Are you more of a uh, technically sound of your brawler? Uh, how would you best describe your wrestling style? I'm more technical. I haven't gotten to tr uh, try anything else as yet. I do want to try maybe when I get a little better try to do some high flying moves but I'm never that type that'll just jump into the ring and brawl with anybody unless it's necessary. Well more technical. 
Who do you consider as uh, influences in your wrestling career? Um, I would have to say Trish Stratus. I was a big fan of hers back in the day. I would seriously sit there and study her matches and see what I could probably use in my own career and just go from there. Trish Stratus is definitely a prime example of someone that um, maybe people then took her seriously at, at first maybe because she came from a fitness model background but right. and then and when she first started wrestling you know it took her some time but uh, she took it seriously she really wanted to to be a wrestler not be perceived as a model and then all of a sudden seven championships and a hall of fame later i mean she's she she's definitely made a name for herself that's true so do you have any upcoming matches or shows that you'd like to promote um actually i do a lot of cross uh, a lot of customs and when i'm not doing shows so I am doing two custom shoots in the next two weeks. One is for Zealot Wrestling League, which is up in West Jersey, North and Central, depending. And um, the next one would be for, that's on July 13th, before I forget. So that's next Saturday. And the other one is for New England Female Wrestling on the 20th. And that will also be here in New Jersey. I just not certain of where in New Jersey yet. It might be Central Jersey as well. Um, as for shows, I'm hoping to get a couple of shows maybe get booked soon, but we'll have to see on that. When it comes to the custom wrestling shows, um, did you reach out to the companies or did they reach out to you? And how did you first feel about the whole concept of fans booking matches they get to determine you know who's the baby face who's the heel the they get to come up with the script i mean how did you feel about the whole concept of the custom wrestling i was actually pretty interested when i uh, was reached out to by new england and so i was invited to go out to massachusetts to check it out even though they even though the promoter there was trying to get me a match because, well, I'm coming from New Jersey, why would I not, like, get anything? But it turned out I didn't get anything after all the trying we did. And I still was invited to come out and check it out. And from there, I was like, you know, I like it. And if it comes down to it, I'd like to get booked. And lo and behold, I got my first custom match last March for like I said, for New England, and I was actually, as much as I sat there thinking, oh, I'm going to mess this up, I did a pretty good job with it, and I ended up getting called back. It was a while before I got called back again, but I did get called back again a couple of times, and I'm actually glad to make my return to them on July 20th. Um, I did do one custom, actually to jump back to the whole thing, I did do one custom back in March, at the end of March, and that was pretty good also. I was actually in Thomas River, New Jersey, and at that point, because it was a new company, I felt a little, I was just a little nervous about the whole thing, but everything turned out to be okay, and it was like, in the end, why am I worried? And it did forget one more show. I did, uh, I worked Genesis Championship Wrestling up in Pompton Lake. Yeah, Pompton Lake, New Jersey, back in the beginning of March. I don't know why I forgot these. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> hey, you're a wrestler. You know, sometimes you take too many shots to the head or whatever. And, I, mean, I probably took too many, like, basketballs that I forgot. <laughs> hey, it, it, it happens. It happens. Wrestlers, athletes, well, mostly wrestlers and MMA fighters. They just, 
they just take too many shots to the head, and sometimes people just don't think, you know, too much. So it's it's understandable. Uh, I'm I'm at your Facebook fan page right now, looking at the some of the uh, matches here, or better at the custom stuff. Uh, UWC, uh, well not UWC, but Z Lot. Um, for people, just so for people that's listening to this right now. Uh, for the July shoot that you got coming up, uh, you got Ada Marie, you got a lot of notable wrestlers from the Northeast, uh, just to get them some ideas as far as opponents that you would like to face. Who are some people that you would like to face in these upcoming custom shoots? Well, who would I like to face in the upcoming custom shoots? Um, I wouldn't mind facing... I wouldn't mind facing Ida Marie again. I will say that. I faced her the last time. And actually, I faced her and Jackie Daniels the last time. So I would say that if I had to go between the two of them, I wouldn't mind seeing them again. Um, I would not I would love to go up against Amber Rodriguez. And... Yeah, that's about it. I know for this shoot, I'm going up against Riley Richards, but those are the main three I'd like to see again. And uh, where can people go uh, for more info on these custom websites so that uh, people can get the emails and the scripts in? Well... Actually, if they wanted to do that, New England and Zealot both have Facebook pages, so they can go on those pages and grab the information there and get in contact with everyone that's involved and say that they want to go, they want to see, well, in this case, let's say me against so-and-so. It could be anybody. I'll take anybody on. I don't have, I'm not scared of anybody. <laughs> Well put. So everybody go uh, book Athena some matches for ZWL and for New England Female Wrestling. Uh, check out her upcoming shows as well. And I do want to point out, um, I did purchase one of your videos for New England. Um, oh, really? Was, yes, I did. It was a match against um, Simply Divine, now known as Sienna Duvall. Sienna. Yes. Yeah, that was last March. I remember that one. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that match. Uh, job well done between you both. Um, so, if you can have a dream match, it could be anyone from the indie scene. It could be anyone on the pros. Uh, it could, male, female, it don't matter. If you could have a dream match against anybody, dead or alive, who... Who would your dream opponent be? Ric Flair. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I adore that man. Uh, I would love to be in the ring with him one day. Well, I know he's in his 60s, but <laughs> if I ever had a dream match, it would be against him. Interesting so, choice there. Nate, you know, Nate, I, I could definitely see Nature Boy wrestling in his 60s hey if sting can wrestle in his 50s why not nature boy he he looked like he could still move a bit i mean i mean west you know wrestlers they talk about retirement and stuff they never going to be retiring they's always going to be around somehow like if they, yeah that's true yeah if they if they get that call from vince or dixie you best believe they're going they're going to pick up and and at least consider that one more match or whatever. Um, you know, you've been wrestling, like you said, since 2008. Uh, do you have any highlights that you have had in your wrestling career? Like maybe a rivalry that you have had or a championship you may have won or a storyline angle that you was a part of? What would you do you consider as highlights of your wrestling career thus far? Actually, you know, I just thought about this. Actually, the shining point of my whole career so far, I hadn't wrestled 
this particular time, but, like, I always had a dream if I did participate in, like, a wrestling match, it would have to be on the Battleship New Jersey, and that finally happened in July of 2009. Yeah, July of 2009, I was managing that time, but I always wanted to actually go on the ship and just check things out, because like, I like that kind of stuff, and I was never happier when I was asked to participate and again, this was awesome wrestling, so pretty much I was happy when I was asked to participate in that show. And I believe that every, and most of my friends had come out for that, so I was happy that, you know, I was able to do this. My friend, Some of my friends were supportive. They were able to see me do that. And everyone had a good time after all that. So that was... That, so there was a wrestling ring on top of a battleship. I mean, yeah, the ship. And this was in Camden, New Jersey. Yes. Wow. I hope none of y'all didn't get seasick after that show was it over. It didn't move though. The boat was still stationary. So ah, okay. <laughs> so <Yeah. it's> <laughs> well, that's good, especially for those that maybe seasick or whatever. So, you know, that... I was just like, like as soon as I heard that. Like, we got a booking on there. I'm like, wow, okay. I definitely want to do this. It literally cleared out whatever I had. I didn't have anything going on, thank goodness, nothing else happening. So I was just happy to be there. That's definitely cool for a indie show to do that. I mean, I don't think WWE, TNA, or Wing of Honor ever came up with that idea. So if they do, then you can just say, hey, this company... In the Northeast, we we came up with that first. Like, y'all go west on Afghanistan, on the armed forces or whatever, but we the first to be on the battleship. Take that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, um, what what do you like the most of being a wrestler? Do you like the, is it the matches? Is it the fan interaction? Is it, uh, being with your colleagues in the inside or outside? Is it the traveling? What do you like the most of being a wrestler? I like everything about it. The interaction with the fans. I like being in matches. I like getting to go to different places. I mean, I, just, I usually, I'm just around Jersey, so if it's like a place that I may have visited as a kid, it's a lot different because you're visiting, because it's like you're doing a show in the same place, but it's totally, it's all completely very different. I like seeing everyone that I know, because, and I'll remember everybody. I'm just, I don't know, I'm like that, where I'll remember you, I might have seen you once, and I'll just remember you every time I go somewhere. It's not like, oh, well, I don't remember, or no, I'm just like, I'm pretty much a people person, so, like, the whole fan, especially the fan interaction you get me, so I'm, I would say I like everything, but mainly the fan interacting would be the main thing. And my last question is for people out there that wants to get in touch with you social media-wise, why don't you go ahead and promote your, your Facebook fan page or Twitter or any other links people need to know? Well, my Facebook page is under my real name. I don't have a fan page put up yet, but I'm starting to because I know that's probably a lot more important. So if they were to look up Larry Simon, they'd find me on Facebook. Um, my Twitter page is pretty much if you look up Blue Angel 28, that's me. I'm um, sure I'm the only one, so pretty much there you go. <laughs> so that's L I L Angel 28. No, Blue Angel. Oh, Blue Angel. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Well, Athena, it was great talking to you. Thank you for being on the show on the day after Independence Day. And uh, great talking to you. Best of success goes out to you. And I look forward to seeing more of you from the indie scene to the custom scene as well. Uh, again, thank you for being on the show this evening. Thank you. I'm glad to, I was glad to be a part of the show. 
You have a good night, Athena. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. That was Athena Cage joining me here on Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. I still got the Impact Recap to get into. And I also have... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I just have the uh, Impact Recap. So, as I get into it, I've got about eight minutes left. Uh, let's see. On to the impact recap first. Of course, the whole talk was about the whole suicide situation. Um, turns out that the guy originally had suicide. Um, Austin Aries was unveiled as the suicide imposter and went on to win the X Division Championship. Uh, he defeated... Uh, let's see, it was Saban, it was Suicide, it was Kenny King, I believe. Uh, but Hogan didn't take too kind of it. Now remember, um, uh, Austin Aries was the exhibition champion on wellness time last year and Destination X came along and he sat and he sacrificed the X division title. So he can get a shot at the world title. And it worked out for him pretty good. He ended up being champion. Now, if you remember, TNA is now sticking to four major pay-per-views. Genesis, Slammiversary, Bound for Glory, and there was another pay-per-view. Lockdown. Okay, Lockdown was the other pay-per-view. So... And they got these one night only pay per views. Right now, what's can go? What's going to be uh, going on throughout the month of July? As of tonight, is Hardcore Justice Two. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, so Hulk Hogan decided to have a triple threat match with the same three guys, just Aries as Aries. Um, Aries versus Manic versus Saban for the X Division title. And it's been announced that in less than two weeks, Destination X will be making its national televised debut. Except it's not going to be three hours. It'll be two hours. Uh, Gail Kim will face Turn to Well in a ladder match to determine who will be the number one contender for the X Division title, which is currently held by Mick James. Um, gut check. Big O was first to be eliminated, which means Ryan Howe had an opportunity. Um, two of the three said no. The only person that said yes was, of course, OVW's Danny Davis. Um, Pritchard and Snow said no. Al Snow's been wearing some crazy coats as of late. Uh, Jay Bradley went on to face Hernandez in a Bound for Glory series match. Hernandez went on to win that by a pinfall. He gets seven points. Stay, um, wait a minute. Kazarian versus AJ Styles. Um... Styles won that match by a submission that gives him 10 points. Um, Gunner and James Storm defeated the Bromans, Jesse Gutters and Robbie E. Oh, and by the way, get a load of this. The one guy who suffered the worst of the Bound for Glory series match as of right now, that goes to Joseph Park. Jeff Hardy went on to win his match against Park by disqualification, which gives Jeff Hardy three points. And unfortunately for Mr. Park, Park and Park, that's negative 10 points for him. So he's got a lot of catching up to do, but plenty of time. Um, and of course, the main event, Aries versus... Manic and uh, formerly known as Suicide and Chris Saban 
and let's just say a Wong turn into a right, and for the sixth time, Chris Saban is the X Division champion. And if he can hang on the title for just one more week, Destination of Wise, and what a coincidence, Destination X is coming to OVW City, Louisville, Kentucky. So for the first time ever, Destination X on national television, baby. I'm looking forward to that. Of course, Hardcore Justice, one night only. Um, that will be going on throughout the month of July as of today. Now on to the SmackDown recap before I get on out of here. You got <clears throat> Fondango defeated Gabriel. Dolph Ziggler went on to defeat um, Drew McIntyre and the Three Stooges thing continued. Um, Alicia Fox got even and defeated Caitlyn with assists from Diva Champion AJ. The Usos defeated the World Scholars. Wendy Orton defeated Christian and CM Punk versus Alberto De Rio in it in a no contest as um Mr. Um, Paul Heyman was on commentary not by choice it was Teddy Long that insists he be on the commentary and when uh, De Rio attacked Heyman CM Punk had a Hulk moment. He must have, he he didn't turn green, but he had that moment when he just went off. So um that pretty much is your recap of SmackDown. Next week I'll be joined with a fellow Kenny as in Kenny Stone, uh indie pro wrestling referee. I got any pro wrestler Chloe that's coming up on the nineteenth. And I can now confirm Justin Overstreet and hopefully Mackenzie York will be joining me on the 26th. Um, there you have it. I'm done. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Thank you to Athena Cage for joining me this evening. And that's it. I'm done. You all have a great remainder of the holiday weekend. This is Triple Threat Wrestling Radio. We are live right here on Ustream.tv. Don't forget, Chilling with Jeff and Kenny C. This Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Check it out. Again, I'm Kenny C. And I'm out. Have a good night. Have a great rest of the holiday weekend. I'm out.